Good evening. We begin tonight with a powerful eyewitness report from the devastation on the Hawaiian island of Maui. The wind-driven inferno that tore across Maui last week consumed everything in its path. A hurricane of fire that moved at speeds of more than a mile a minute, reducing buildings to ash and, it's feared, claimed hundreds of lives. With 96 people known to have died and up to 1,000 more missing, there are questions tonight about the lack of emergency warning. But seared into the minds of those who survived the flames is a sheer horror of what befell their homes, their communities and the people they loved. Our correspondent, P Peter Smith, reports from Maui. On Maui's west coast, the town of Lahaina is the epicentre of these wildfires, the deadliest in America for well over a century. Lahaina was Hawaii's ancient royal capital, now in ruins, a paradise lost. We've arrived to what is currently an active investigation zone, streets closed off by police and the National Guard. Those who were able to flee the fire have now been allowed back in to assess the damage. We join one family who see for the first time what is left of their home. It's devastated, man. It's devastated. This was actually the bedroom. Then there was a next bedroom, the bathroom, and a third bedroom. This part was the living room and the kitchen. For those who escaped this disaster, there is gratitude, but also the pain of now learning about the neighbours who did not. Sad, but the only thing, my grandchild, they are OK, we are safe. We never, I never think about the car already. Your family's safe? Yes. In Lahaina, the burnt out buildings have become makeshift graves. The dead are still being counted. Almost 1,000 remain unaccounted for. But there are no miracles here. No hope that anyone will be rescued now from these ashes. Let's go! And this is why it has been so deadly. There's fire to there! Go! Residents recorded their terrifying escape go, go, as flames go. ripped through the Come only on. road out. Here you go, bro. Yeah, go, go, go! In the next moments of this video, the body of a woman is seen unconscious on the side of the road. Somebody's down right Yeah, somebody's down. Just go, Dad. We cannot do nothing for her. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, bro. Just go, Dad. Just go. We cannot do nothing for her. Just go. Go, people, go. Beat the word, Dad. Oh, my God, bro. Today, we found her family. I came to do a DNA swab for my mom because I saw a video that went viral, and I know deep in my heart that that was my mom laying there on the road, which Just is right dead. in front of her house, her house. our family house. Yeah. As well as dealing with grief, they tell us about the trauma of their own escape. Just pitch black, thick smoke. Couldn't see, just in the reach of my arm, I couldn't even see that far. The screaming, the yelling, the honking of horns, the sirens wailing. And embers flying, burning my hair. And We're still missing a cousin that we don't know about that lived in the same home as my mom. My grandma, her mom. You're not holding out hope, do you? You're yeah, sure. I have no hope. No, no. Winds of 80 miles an hour pushed the fire into the town. There was no evacuation warning. The fire was spreading so rapidly that when it reached the coastal homes here, some people found they were left with no way out. Roads were blocked and in a moment of panic, people decided their only option was to jump into the sea and start swimming for their lives. <laughs> People fought hard to live, but no help could get in until it was too late. The fire was so hot the entire structure of buildings like this were completely incinerated. Only a small section of roof now indicates there was a house here. We meet Ernest looking for information on his younger brother. He is among the missing. You know, sometimes you just hoped it. Maybe he went fast. You, you know. Just, just went fast. They're not suffer with the burns, you know. Helicopter teams are still dropping water on two wildfires that continue to burn on Maui. 
with so many already dead or displaced, and winds once again picking up here, people on this Hawaiian island can only fear what is on the horizon. Well, Peter joins us now from Maui. And um, Peter, your report mentioned DNA testing to try to identify victims, but that must be a hugely complex operation amid such devastation. Yeah, counting the dead here is a slow process, and that's because we have to keep in mind these fires were so intense, so hot, they have melted through metal, entire structures disintegrated, as you saw in our report here. And so relatives of the missing are being warned by the search teams they should not expect bodies to be recovered for burial. Instead, what we're talking about here is forensics teams now combing through the ashes, looking for traces of human DNA to provide positive identification. And that's why the relatives are providing those DNA samples, these swabs, uh, to try and help to, to recover and to find out if their uh, missing loved ones are indeed among the dead here. But while Maui is trying to deal with the dead, they're also struggling to cope with the living. We're talking about more than 1,400 people here who have lost their homes, their livelihoods overnight. Six shelters on the island filling up. The biggest one at War Memorial Complex behind me, the gymnasium, full of people here. The donations are coming in. It has to be said, most of them being given by locals who are trying to help. And there is frustration that the response from a US federal level has been insufficient and also anger when they're seeing Joe Biden being asked if he'll come. He's saying no comment and smiling. The fires here are still going. The danger hasn't gone away. And also, this is known by many people as a tropical paradise. It may surprise you to know that tourists are still coming here. Certainly in Western Maui, the message is, don't come. This is not the time for tourism. They need to focus their resources on putting out these fires and rebuilding their community.